Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome, freshmen. I'd like to welcome you all to the USJ orientation this afternoon. So, first of all, I would like to invite Ms. Teresa Rock. First of all, welcome everybody to be here. Uh, you are the first year students, and maybe you are not very familiar with USJ. So, we take this opportunity to give you a short presentation on the student handbook and the different kind of services that we provide to you, our students, okay? So before going to the presentation, I know that here we have three groups of students, okay? Maybe it's also time for all of us to know one another. So uh, may I know who is the other students in communications and media? Would you mind to raise up your hand? Communication and media. Okay, welcome. Let's give them an applause. And then uh, we have architecture. So who are the students in architecture? Uh, we have a group of around 10 from architecture. Welcome. And then we have another group from design. So may I know who are the students from design? OK. Welcome. So um, thank you for coming. And now I will give you briefly an idea on our presentation. Okay, first I will go to the student handbook. Okay, each of you will be receiving a student handbook later. And then here I will only highlight some of the points that are very important for you to know. So for sure I will not read one by one because the whole book uh, is around 60 pages. But these are all important information for you. First of all, this is a, uh, the reason why we want to have the student handbook because you will be help to navigate across policies and procedures at USJ. This is not the uh, this is the first version, but during the year there may be some policies and regulations that we will update. So for the most update version, we will upload it in Google document where the IT support will inform you later how to check it. So the first stage is the register message and then comes something that is very important for you is the, our directory. So our directory is we have information like the dean and the program coordinators, their contact information, their email and where is their office located because from time to time you may need to speak and find your program coordinator, the dean or the other professor. So here we have the information of the deans, the coordinator. Say for example, uh, your coordinator is uh, for architecture is Mr. Thomas, Professor Thomas. So his office is in Nap 2 room M. And Professor Teresa Simon is also in Nap 2 room M. So uh, if you would like to find, to speak with them, you just go to Nap 2. And there are also important contests like uh, of the different departments at USJ, like academic records. Later, when you ESU apply for a transcript or apply for a declaration, you need to contact the academic records. So it's located in that one. And accounting services, IT support, library, and our office, Office of Student Affairs. And here is faculty location. I know today, all the it belongs to the programs of the faculty of creative industries. So all the professor, the staff room are located in NAP to room M. So when you whenever you would like to find your professor in your specialized area, you just need to go to NAP to and find them. They have their office are all there. Then here is the USJ map. I will not explain in detail now because later you will have a games, a scavenger hunt that you need to explore the three campuses. So you will know which floor and which building belongs to NAP1, NAP2, and NAP3. And here is the USJ calendar. So it's important for you to have a look because uh, we have information like uh, 
Today and yesterday was the orientation day, and but your class start on formally on Monday next week, which is on the 17th of September. But it really depends on whether you have class or not. So please check your schedule at my USJ to check which uh, your schedule first before coming because different students will have different schedule at different locations to have their classes. And in October, uh, all the university uh, holidays are also posted in the USJ calendar. And then, uh, for example, in October, we have first and second uh, public holiday. And then we have the fourth, we have the Holy Spirit Mass here in the speaker's hall. And then we have graduation and the scholarship awarding ceremony on the 31st of October. So these are all the information that you need to go through and also time to make your uh, payment, etc. You can also find in the USJ calendar. For the academic information, I will not go one by one, but I will just highlight some of the information that is very important, but I would like all of you really to read it, the whole handbook at home, because it's very important for you. So uh, what is important is uh, the main office I don't think anybody has the, your student card yet. So the main office will send you an SMS next week to inform you when do you need to come to pick up your student card. So check your mobile. And second, if you have any change of student information, like your telephone number, your address, postal address, etc., please uh, update your information to the academic records. Because some important information sometimes we send by SMS. So if you have changed your mobile number and you didn't inform us, you will not receive information from us. Now we will go to the grades and honors. Okay. As I emphasize here the grading system. Uh, we are using the grading system following the UCP, the Catholic University of Portugal, that the grading system is 0 to 20. So your passing grade is from 10 to 20, and if you get the 0 to 9, it means that you got failed in this module. And this is very important, attendance and punctuality. In principle, students are expected to attend on time for the start of each session and to remain for the whole session. So, if you come late for 15 minutes, we will count you as an absent. And point number two in our policy is very important. According to Article 41, Item 1 of the USAJ statutes, students who are registered in the attendance system shall not pass the module if they attend less than two thirds of classes of each module. So, it means that if you have missed more than one third of your class, you will automatically fail in the module. Okay, so we have to make it very clear in the beginning. But for sure, we would like all of you to be present in all the classes because uh, uh, you will lose a, a dynamic interaction with your teachers as well as you are losing content. So you are advised to attend all this, every classes. Now we will jump to uh, the absence for medical reasons. So if you are really red absent because students may be sick or we will be sick, okay? So if you are really sick, you have to submit the medical documentation from a registered health care provider to your instructor when you come back to class. So you are required to do so. And attendance in inclement weather. So such as typhoons, rainstorms, you do not know whether you need to come to classes or not. So in the back of the handbook, there is a policy in inclement weather. So please read it carefully. When do you need to come and when you don't need to come? I will... Uh, not discuss more on this, but uh, it's very important to go through one by one. And then I will jump to another topic that is related to languages. Okay, in USJ, 
we are using the European portfolio, European language portfolio. That is, you are all compulsory to take English, Portuguese, and Cantonese. Uh, uh, sorry, and Putonghua. So uh, you are classified into different levels, and it's from A1 to C2. A1 is the lowest, and C2 is the highest level. So, but don't worry, because you will be having classes with the students of your same level. So we will teach you according to their level, and uh, so if, uh, but, and also for those who are weak in certain languages, especially in English, we will give extra support to you. And also one thing I, we would like to emphasize is that, point out, in order to graduate, since this is an English medium, all, all your program is in English medium, so you need to uh, reach B2 level before you can graduate for English. So English we will have an SC level that is B2 level. Okay, I will now go to the services. The other services that we are providing to you. Okay, now I will go to the, our front that is the Student Affairs, or San Simo, okay? Our students, OSA stand for Office of Student Affairs, and we are located in up to room A. So our aim is to provide support for students' learning and personal growth with the assistance of all USJ faculty and colleagues by providing important services, being advocates for students, and helping students adjust socially through student involvement in co-curricular activities. So we provide three main types of services, student service, career services, and alumni services. The student services of the OSA is composed of several areas, namely but not limited to the following. The academic support, scholarships, sports, student residence, workshops, and activities. Okay, for academic support, I know that maybe some of you come from a, uh, graduate from a Chinese high school, so maybe in the first year you will find uh, a bit struggling in, in your course, but we will give you all the necessary support to make you success. The first one is the Writing Center in English Teaching Corner. So we are very happy this year we have six Fulbright students from America. They will come as tutors, helping assisting you in English. So they will help in the writing center and English speaking corner. So you will be informed whenever you have any need, you can go to them. And you will meet them in, your, in the scavenger hunt later. And second, this year we have the peer tutoring program. So the peer tutor is a senior student in your major that will assist and help you when you have difficulties in a certain course due to challenging subject matters. We have a counseling center and uh, it's not only for those who have problems, okay? So whenever you are, maybe you encounter some, uh, something not happy or you want someone to talk to, and you are welcome to come to this counseling center. Actually, some of our staff and our students also come to the counseling center whenever we need. So uh, this is also one more service. And then the second one is scholarship, Zhang Hogan. Okay, we provide two types of scholarship: the USJ scholarships and the USJ community scholarships. USJ scholarships is awarded to students with financial difficulties and supported by 
are required document. So, and if you have difficulty in financial, you can approach us, but for sure you also need to reach a certain minimum level of your study study. So GPA should reach 14 or above. And second is the community scholarships. These are scholarships given by different uh, various and prominent local institutions and individuals to students with outstanding academic performance. So this year we are very happy that we receive around 50 scholarships from 18 prominent donors like the different government centers, uh, like the Social Work Bureau, the South, and then also different foundations like Macau Foundation, the Harry Ford Foundation, the Lingfong Foundation, and companies like uh, the SAM, the CTM, the Galaxy, the Venetian, etc. So if you are interested, you can apply for the scholarships. And uh, you still catch the application deadline because the first the application deadline for the first semester is 21st of September, that is next Friday. Okay? But we will also open for application in the second semester. Okay, now we will go through some uh, involve some of the sports activities and for the rest uh, I won't touch much, but for the workshop and uh, we are planning to have a workshop of time management in November, so we will inform you later. Okay, for sports, uh, we have many different types of sport activities and what we, is important is that we are not just limited to students. We also, uh, the sports activities, we welcome staff and faculty members to join. So these are before uh, the, uh, the different kinds of competition that we have organized last year. The tracking, uh, the badminton competition tournament, the basketball tournament, the soccer, and the tennis. And uh, for coming year, tentatively, we have scheduled three tournaments. That is the basketball, the badminton, and the soccer. And I would like to tell that uh, it's very, very important. Uh, whenever we have any activities, we will uh, send out by email and also by poster. We will post the poster around. So, and, and if you have any other uh, tournament that you would like to organize or you would like to suggest, uh, feel free and come to us and to tell us. Next, uh, we will have provide the career services. One of the programs hosted by OSA, our office, for students in USJ is the Student Ambassador Program. That is the Hosan Dai Si Gai Wang. So, what are student ambassadors? They are like student helpers because uh, many of our offices, departments, or different faculty, we may have different kind of projects. So, we would like to open the opportunity for the students to learn during the process. So, as we will uh, pay for the students for sure, and then uh, we will we would like them really to learn something through practice. So whenever we have any jobs available in our university, we will send out the information by email. So it's really, really important that you check your email regularly because mainly the university, our university, send out information through email. And the second is that we, will, we are also working closely in partnership with our career center to come up with more career-based projects. Because I know that ah, in design, in communication, media, and architecture, all of you will have internships in your curriculum. But in some programs, we don't have internship. So we have another type called work experience program. So the program coordinators work closely with our career center to place you in internship in different areas. And this one may not be useful for you for the time being, but we would also like to introduce is the alumni service. So when after you graduate, uh, you become alumni. Okay, now you are our students. And we are also, our office is also working hand in hand with the alumni association to be always be connected to them and to train the career choices and developments. So uh, our alumni association is very active 
and they have been organized many activities and they will also open the invitation to the students. So if you want to approach our alumni, also feel uh, you can join different kinds of activities and they also work closely with the student association. So uh, because uh, USJ have been offering master and PhD program for a long time for more than 15 years, I think more than 15 years. So we have many master students who graduate and are now in very senior position in the local community. So we will have some gathering with them and also ask them to come to share with you. So uh, we are looking forward to have more opportunity in the later. And we are also creating a survey database to collect information uh, of our alumni, alumni so that we have a better picture on them. So who we are? Uh, the Office of Student Affairs, not only, for sure, not only I'm working there. I'm Teresa, and I'm working with Professor Anna Chen, the Vice Rector, Renato Markish, and he's not available today, so uh, he's a uh, coordinator for sports and student residence. Our Amanda at the back, and also Norman. Norman, I think, is uh, also at the back. And in summary, is if you have any problem studying at USJ, just come to us if you don't know where to go. Because we will try our best to help you, but even if we cannot help you, we will direct you to the place, to our colleagues that can help you. Okay, thank you, and see you. I will quickly go through a couple of things that we believe it's important for you to start to understand how it's going to work uh, for your study at USG. Uh, related to uh, technology and services we provide. So we have one uh, simple website that we call start.uag.edu.mo. And this website you will find the links that you need to go to the different places on uh, USG. So I'm going to talk about each of them. The first one I want to talk is my USG. It's the place where you will find your schedule, study plan, transcript, uh, application forms, courses, and, and so on, and other services that we are adding over the time. But th that's where you will find all your personal information, as well as all your uh, academic information related to your course and uh, the grades. Second point is the hub. The hub is the place where most of our teachers place uh, material and resources for the course they are teaching to you. So that's where you're going to have the PowerPoint maybe or the PDF from the teacher or some link they add for you to as a resources so you can check online. Or some of them also had some quiz, tests online, and some they're also doing their uh, exam, final exam for the course as well on the, on the hub. So you will have a lot of activities on, on the hub, and this is something that probably you will use uh, in most of your courses. Some teachers, they don't need to use it, so you won't have to go there, but a lot of teachers are putting material there. The third application that we are using is Google Apps, so I will talk about it uh, later, but basically that's the place where you will get your own email address, a calendar, document, and so on. And the last one is the website, so it's the public website that pr you probably have seen before, uh, and which provide basically uh, general information for the public. Oops, sorry. Okay, so this is my USG, my.usg.edu.mo. This is where, uh, this is the page that you will see before login. This page, uh, you will put your username and password and you will get your personal information, the schedule that you have to check for your course starting on Monday and so on. All the username and, and password on all our different systems I mentioned are always the same. So on my USG, the Hub and Google Apps, we synchronize them so you make sure that you always have the same username and password. Before you arrive, normally you should have received an email with your username Usually it's like a first name dot last name or last name dot first name, depend on, uh, on your name, basically. Uh, so if you should have received this email and a link on this email to allow you to set your own password. Once you set your password, then you can log in on any of those systems. 
If you have any problem, you can contact us or visit us in our office. You will all come to our office later on. So that's for this page. I just want to show you one more screen about my UAG to explain a little bit. This page is once you log in and you check your schedule. So here on this schedule you can see the different courses are different colors. And you can click on them to go inside and see the detail of your course. So it allows you quickly to have a, a view on what you're going to uh, be learning during a month or a week or whatever you want. You will also have the study plan. So this is where you will collect all your grade uh, over your four years here. And uh, a lot of other services that I, I don't want to detail now, but you will get used to them later on. The hub, so this is the learning management system we are using. Once you log on the hub, you will see a page with the list of your courses, basically. And when you click on one of the courses available for you, you will see something like this. So this is a course for pre-university, I believe, where the teacher puts some slides, PDF, uh, workshop uh, uh, information, so very simple course. You will see that some of the courses, especially I think in language, uh, are much more advanced than this. They have a lot of information. It really depends on the teacher and the way they, they work with you. But you will find a lot of useful information here for sure. The last application I want to mention is Google Apps. So for those of you using Gmail, you will see it's exactly the same except that it's UAG branded. So we have our own logo and that's about it. Your email will be firstname.lastname at uag.edu.mo, something like that. And one thing I want to mention is that, so this is the email you will see on the black two navigation bar on the top, that you also have other services like calendar, drive is for document and so on. Uh, so I suppose calendar, mail, and drive will be the free one that uh, free services are the most useful. About Google Apps, also one thing I want to mention is that most of you probably have a smartphone. Of course, it's not mandatory to have one, but if you do have one, you can easily set up your Google Apps account to get your email and calendar on your phone, whether it's uh, iPhone or Android phone, you can always set it up and get everything on it so you make sure that you keep uh, the link with the university and receive our emails. It's just a suggestion, we don't force you to do it, of course. What we want you to check is your email anyway, so uh, the way you check them, it's up to you. One point about the, the internet connection. So on the campus, we provide free access to all our students and staff. And for this, for the student, we have one specific uh, wireless network, which is called uag.student. So you select this one, it will ask you a password, and the password is this one, UAG student Wi-Fi 10. You don't need to remember it for now. It will be displayed on different places uh, on the campus. And if you don't remember, you can always ask someone or come to ask us and we'll, uh, we'll set it up for you. Once you have entered this password, you can save it on your computer. And every time you come back on any of the free campuses, it will be automatically connected to the wireless. And finally, the last point I want to mention is the student card. So you will be the first year to get the new USG student card that will look like this. All your student cards have been prepared before you arrive, and they should be available, uh, available at the main office. You should have received an email and most probably an SMS as well to tell you that you can collect it at the main office later. Um, usually we recommend to all students to come to the university with their student cards because sometimes we need the student card to check uh, some of the information. And finally, just to remind you one thing is to remember this address, start.uag.edu.mo. That would be the simple entry point for you to get to the other services when you are lost. Thank you very much. What I'm going to share today is, will be just a brief introduction 
to um, who we are and what we are going to do and how you can help us. So, um, as you can see, the title is Us Briefly. Later on today, as you play the scavenger hunt and do other activities, you'll get to meet more of us and you'll get to get a feel for how, how cool it can be. <laughs> All right, so the structure of the student association. It's basically this, you do not need to memorize this, but I just need to tell you that there's three main parts. The general assembly, the executive committee, and the supervisory committee. And firstly, the general assembly. You can think of these people as the lawyers of the group. They're the people that will make sure that, that look after the laws so that we, and help us to not do something wrong. So they help keep us in check. And if we ever wanted to change one of the laws, they're the people that handle this case. And there are three main people, Alex, the president, Tim, and Sierra. Next, the executive committee. This is a group, this is a larger group of people. They're the ones that are going to do a lot of the activities, events, um, hopefully provide some beneficial services for, this, for us students here in USJ. And I myself am included. As you can see, the president is Michelle. And I would like Michelle to stand up, please, so that you can see her face. You saw her earlier on. Remember her face. She is a very important person, right? Because you have the OSA, the Office of the Student Affairs Office, to go to if you need something, if you need help. And the other person is Michelle. Bombard her with questions. Ask her anything. Go with her with everything. She can handle the pressure. It's good for her. All right. And for you, too. <laughs> All right. Then on the vice president level, we have two internal vice presidents, myself and Alvin. Oh, by the way, I'm also a communications and media student, so you guys can find me also, besides the peer tutors. Yeah. All right, then um, we have two external vice presidents, Sunny and Lego, and we have the secretary, Lucy. Then also, on the next level, we have treasurer, human resources, public relations, and promotion and technology officers. And here is like extension, there's like more, like in the other secretary, the other vice treasurer, and s there are several people in public relations. Um, you don't need to remember anyone's name now, except Michelle's, so, because you're gonna be meeting us more and more during the year. Thirdly, the supervisory committee. They're the people that are going to kind of supervise us and make sure whenever we do have events or activities, we're going to be using the money wisely. We're not gonna be spending it on buffets, stuffing our faces. We're gonna use it for, uh, to the best, in the best possible way that we can. And they're gonna write reports and um, our uses, and I believe that that's the majority of what they do, actually. And in, the, in there, there are three main people. The president, Chong Ta Pu, and two vice presidents, Zhao and Imran. All right, now when we do do events and activities, um, the things that we keep in mind, the things that we're striving for this year, are, can be summarized in five points. We want to best represent the students' will. We want to strengthen, help strengthen and maintain the school spirit. We want to raise students' sense of belonging to the university. And we want to act as a bridge between the students and the faculty. And also, we want to help support students with welfare and academic affairs. A lot of these things will also, you'll also know about through email. So once again, I will reiterate, you must check your email. So do not go halfway through the year and be like, oh, they're sending me a million emails. I'm gonna ignore everything from the school. Do not do this, please. Because there are lots of things that you will find that will be beneficial to you. And you, you can only receive them if you check the email. All right. And we also have a lot to do with the clubs this year. Here you'll see a list of, actually I didn't count before. One, I think 13, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 13 clubs. Um, this is the clubs that we've done la last year and the years before, and most probably the majority of them will continue on um, the coming year. There may be some, that you, some kind of clubs you would like to see in the school. You have the power to create them, or you, also, you can also come to us and ask us, hey, I would like to have this kind of club in the university. What can I do? And we can help with that. And and I'd like to highlight a few, like soccer. Hopefully you can find some stuff here already that you like. 
Some of them are doing really well, like basketball. They won, they won championship last year. Aikido is kind of popular. It's a kind of martial arts club that they started just last year. So I hope you guys can have a really healthy and happy club um, life. When I say club, I mean like this kind of club life in the university. And this is, this is us. And take a good look of this good bunch of good looking people, especially the guy in the middle that looks like me, right? Because, yeah, and please help us support you. Check your emails and get active, do lots, do anything, you know. Find some really good stuff, good things to do this year. That's the idea. Thanks. <laughs> Understanding and the humankind's understanding of what our place is in society, what our place is in the universe. That's how we bring values into our lives, and we, afterwards, when you become professionals, you will be able to bring values into your lives and your professional work. Because you will have learned to think outside the box. Do you know what that means? think outside the box. Uh, normally we think inside the square we've been told to study. But you have to sometimes, or you will often in life, meet things which 
suddenly surprise you. You don't know the answer. You, it wasn't in the textbooks. How do you respond? A person who's had a university education should have learned to have thought, to be able to be creative, think critically, and analyze the situation and bring an inventive, creative response. So, being part of a university is part of an adventure set up community where we learn to talk to one another and question one another, not take things simply as if they were just as you hear them. You hear the professors and you think the professor knows everything because you don't know what the professor knows. And so you're studying with a professor and you think, oh, here I am, I know so little and he knows so much. You forget that uh, we professors, after we've been in your position, have become more and more specialized and have started thinking and studying down one particular subject. And so we may know the last book about my area of studies, but I've already forgotten a lot of things which you will be studying. So when you are studying, you will be listening to lots of professors who are at the peak of knowledge in their area, but who have probably forgotten many of the things you're studying in, in some of the other subjects. So what you are hearing, you are in fact hearing the latest ideas from these various professors, and you can cross the information getting from one to others. You can question in different classes, oh, I've heard this over here, why? Does this happen this way? It doesn't it happen that way? So learning to question and to ask and to think and to introduce uh, new ideas is part of our job here in uh, USJ. Part of your job. Uh, keeping us on our toes. You know what that means? In keeping keeping uh, professors uh, up to date on what they're doing. Uh, I told your colleagues in the other presentations that uh, perhaps you don't know that universities started in the Middle Ages in Europe. And they started in some places, I remember one place in particular, a city in Italy called Bologna, which has given its name to the new process which is changing the universities in Europe, the Bologna process. In Bologna, the university started as a federation of students who wanted to know more. And so they uh, set about getting teachers. And it was the students who were the employers of the teachers. And they contracted the teachers and they fired the teachers when they didn't like them. And, uh, so it was the students who were running the show, so to speak. And because they thought that their understanding of things and their studies should leave them independent of the interests, the economic interests, the political interests, which were in those days fragmented between kings and dukes and, uh, and merchants and so on, they decided that they needed some form of independence. And so they went to the Pope, the Pope who was uh, head of the main religion at the time in Europe, and they asked the Pope that he should give them a title when they finished their studies. And so that is how the titles, such as the bachelors, you've heard of bachelors, yes. uh, bachelors in French means a small, small knight, you might call him, a bachelier. And uh, when you moved on a little, which meant that you were already independent, you didn't depend on other people from a sociological point of view. And then if you moved on a little further, you got a licentiate, and licentiate meant that you had a license to teach. That means that you had, took your title and you could cross frontiers and learn the same sort of frontiers they have today. But you studied in Italy, you could go to France, and move from France to Portugal, and you took your title with you, and it was valid everywhere you went. And that is how 
universities began, and that is the idea that you should acquire knowledge which is certified by your diploma, which will allow you to go out into the world and find a job or be useful or carry on teaching or researching and uh, contribute to our understanding of what life is as human beings. So that's been long enough talking to you. <laughs> uh, we will meet again, I'm sure, during the year. And if you have any questions that uh, you think need, uh, or things that you think uh, the university could improve on, do let us know, or through the Students' Association, or through the Office for Student Affairs, or through your professors, or your coordinators, and we will see what can be done. One of the big problems we have, and I'll put it at the top of the list, is that we haven't really got a very good university space. We are trying to be a university on a platform here in NAP, and we have two more apartments in NAP, which are NAP 2 and NAP 3, which you will come to know briefly today. And uh, that is not a really good space for people to meet one another, to work in libraries, to develop feeling of a community as a university. So we are committed to developing a new campus. And I can give you the good news that uh, this week, on Tuesday, uh, Catholic Foundation, which is our title holder, gave us the green light for me to sign the contract with the builders. And a piece of land, which is all ready for building on, uh, we should start seeing the building coming up off the ground from November onwards. Which means that perhaps in two years' time, some of you at least will be able to move into the new campus. And that will be uh, very exciting for all of us. So we will keep an eye on, on that uh, expectation. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your lunch.